Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Grid. I'm Mike Foreman, and I'm joined uh, by, as always, with by Marcus Gutierrez and Ray Castillo from The Advocate. And uh, we're, we've reached the semifinal round of the playoffs. Uh, we have two area teams left, uh, Refiro and Yoakum. The same two teams that advanced to state last year will try and do it again. First, we're going to kind of take a look back at uh, what happened last week. Uh, we had four games and uh, last week, and uh, first I'll just start and mention uh, Fall City uh, took a halftime lead on Burton, but in the third quarter things kind of turned around, and uh, and that and Burton uh, just kind of really put a lot of numbers on the board and uh, eliminated Fall City. Also, we'll move from there, and uh, the next game I guess we should talk about would be uh, Refurio and Mason. Mason in the first half actually uh, led Refurio 14 to 10. Basically, it was uh, two big plays for Mason, uh, one of which followed a Refurio turnover. But in the second half, uh, Refurio took the opening drive and drove down and scored and took the lead. And, uh, from that point on, uh, the Bobcats basically dominated that game. They basically uh, shut down Mason's offense, and uh, they were able to have success moving a ball against a, a Mason defense that had been just totally shutting down opponents. Um, I mean, Mason came into the game having allowed 47 points all season, and Refurio scored 38. So that shows you really a great performance by Refurio in the second half. Uh, then moving on to the other Friday game, uh, which Ray covered, uh, a very disappointing end for the Quero Gobblers who uh, lost to Wimberley. Right. Yeah, they had 26 to, 36 to 24 lead with, with nine minutes left. Um, a great season by the Gobblers. You think, you know, with that lead, with that much time left, that, you know, they can, you know, get comfortable but you know Wimberley man just their quarterback came out and you know Thomas Carthras I might be saying his last name wrong but he came out the running back and scored a touchdown and you know those guys they 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 had it but you know it, it was a, it was a tough loss for them but it don't can't take away the season they had only loss of the season you know they learned what it was like to trail for the first time all year and it was just tough to battle back once you know the Texans got in that groove and, you know um Quero's uh, Jordan Whittington had a great season. You know, he may not have gotten as many touches as he would have liked, but, you know, he came out and, you know, performed well in the fourth quarter. And Drew Schneider had a great game as well. And, you know, they just made mistakes late and then they cost them. But, you know, that team's going to be looking to be back next year. You know, 21 seniors gone. But, you know, they got a young group of core players that are looking to come back. And uh, I know Coach Travis Reed will have them ready. Uh, what what was Wimberley able to do offensively to have so much success against Quero? I think it was just the, the passing game. You know, they really made plays, and they can score the ball quickly. Um, mm -hmm. They started the game really fast um, by JoJo, the quarterback. Right. And uh, he came out, and he just got in the groove early, and it stayed the whole game. He never really had a dull moment. And um, could be wrong on this, but I was told by one of the other riders there that covers Wimberley was that he – Hadn't thrown an interception all year. I thought that no, was one. Yeah, they did have one then. One. Okay, I mean that's that's just impressive right there. And you know, a guy like that, give him a comfortable lead, it's going to make it tough. Yeah, and of course, to be fair, uh, Quell, of course, uh, went into the game without Kieran Grant in right. the secondary, which forced them to move some things around, which I'm sure hurt the Gobblers. And also uh, during the game, uh, John Rodriguez, Rodriguez there, outstanding <laughs> linebacker, was injured. Right. Yeah, in the first quarter, he went down. Yeah. And, you know, they had three players injured overall, and it just made it tough for the Gobblers. Just unfortunate at that time of the year. I know it's a very bitter loss for Quero because this was the year that uh, they thought, you know, the 30-year drought they had talked about would come to an end, but they're going to have to wait another year. And then we'll move to Saturday in a game which we, uh, I guess we thought had high expectations of being a really close game as based on last year. Mm -hmm turned into a, a Yoakum uh, route, really. I mean, Yoakum just dominated that game from start to finish. Yeah, Yoakum over goal ahead, 40-7. to seven, You know, like you just said, um, both teams a rematch from last year's regional round. And um, goal ahead came out and they laid an egg, you would say. Yeah. Um, they had a great season to get to that game. They had they defeated Houseville, which was, had a really right. good season, and Edna. Oh. So you'd expect them to play better. But I think it was Co uh, Coach Bobby Nicholson told us at the game that they were eyeballed 
at that stadium. You know, they mm-hmm. they came out struggling, you know, all through the playoffs that first half. You can't do that against Yokum because yeah. they'll let you play. The they'll make you pay, and they came. Yokum dominated from the trenches. You saw Mike. Yeah. They rushed for over four hundred yards, and it was no doubt about it that Yokum was going to take that as soon as the game started. And that gives credit to Coach Bill Robinson. Um, you know, he's told me throughout the playoffs that a team that can run the ball well and play great defense um, will succeed in the playoffs. And we're there right now, heading into the semifinals. Um, getting prepared uh, for Rockdale. But um, a great season for Goliad. Head coach Bobby Nich- Nicholson, his second season. Um, a school history re- reaching this round. Mm-hmm. And um, that there's a lot of talent on that team. And I'm pretty sure that they're going to be back uh, next year. And it's going to be a team to rot- watch in Region 4. Right. I, I know losing Trevor Parr uh, really hurt them. Uh, not just the fact of his ability, but his leadership mm-hmm. being a senior. Uh, They missed that. Uh, It was just amazing, though, to see the trouble they had just lining up, Mm -hmm. I mean, for plays. I mean, I think they had four or five, you know, know, like procedure penalties Mm -hmm. that, you know, those are unforced errors, you Mm -hmm. know, and and you can't have that at that level or you're going to, you know, you're most of the time you're going to get beat. And uh, they just... uh, you know, they like we talked about, they, they couldn't contain Yoakum's running game, and Yoakum also has the ability to pass, and when they get the running game going, the play-action pass, of course, mm-hmm. works. So uh, great game for Yoakum. I mean, uh, you know, at that level to dominate like that has got to be a good sign. And, you know, while we're talking about Yoakum, we might as well go on and talk about this week's matchup against Rockdale on Friday night. Um the Tigers have three losses, but they've come on as late. And, uh, you know, they have uh, the Crawford kid who's going to Oklahoma as a sprinter. He won both the 100 and the 200 at the state track meet. He's quite an athlete. Mm-hmm. And their quarterback, too, has big numbers. Mm-hmm. So uh, they're going to be a formidable opponent. Yeah, when I when I talked to Josh Moore about Rockdale, he said it's going to be a track meet. He's mm-hmm. going to say there's a lot, of, a lot of athletes on the field, so it's going to be exciting, you know. Yoakum's faced great athletes throughout the playoffs, and they've answered. When they need to stop, they do it. So, um, you know, talking with Coach Robinson, too, he says they match, he thinks they match up evenly. You know, their athletes will match up with mm-hmm. each other, and it's going to come down to the physical team. And we've seen Yoakum be physical all season. And so it, get, it gives them a lot of confidence. You know, uh, Rockdale, like you said, they have three losses. They're coming off a 42-20 win over T, which was a really good team. And just to manhandle something like that in the playoffs, that's a, that's a big sign. Now, Rockdale, they come from a district that has been uh, yeah. historically good. That's what Coach Robinson pointed out to me. So it's, it's going to be a tough game, but like Coach Robinson says, if you can play a great defense and run that ball during this time of year, you're going to win. So the yeah. Bulldogs win. They're in the state title game the second straight year, but mm-hmm. uh, we'll see you on Friday night where what happens. Yeah, and, of course, uh, Rockdale is coached by uh, Jeff Miller, who uh, – I don't know if some of the area people may remember when Warren Trahan was at Bay City. He was uh, Coach Trahan's quarterback coach. So uh, he's been around a lot, a good coach. And like you said, that district, we know that, you know, Cameron Yo Mm -hmm. has come out of that district. I mean, it's traditionally a very strong district and usually has a team this deep in the playoffs. So. Mm -hmm. It'll be a good, it should be a good challenge, and uh, I know, you know, this is, you know, Yoakum has been waiting all year for a chance to get back to uh, AT&T Stadium, and Mm -hmm. uh, they're one step away now, just as uh, the Refugio Bobcats are. Uh, They have a uh, undefeated team they're playing, uh, San Augustine, coming out of East Texas, a team with a lot of speed, big offensive numbers, can run, can throw. Uh, likes to do both. Uh, the Bobcats in this game are going to have to play sound fundamental football. They can't turn the ball over. They can't make uh, silly penalties. Um, and you know, last year in the semifinals, it's 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 always a tough game for Furio because mm-hmm. when you come off of a big emotional game like a Mason, which mm-hmm. is Mason was an excellent team. It's hard to rebound in a week and play well again. Mm-hmm. And that happened to uh, Refiro last year against Centerville. I think they turned the ball over four or five times, had a lot of silly penalties. 
but they still won. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think they can do that against this team. They're going to have to play a good, sound game. And if the Bobcats do that, they have every uh, chance to, uh, to advance. And uh, one thing I can say for this team is it's resilient. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have shown it time and time and again. I mean, we've talked, you know, on and on about what's happened to them. But, uh, you know, they trailed at halftime against uh, against Mason. And even uh, Coach Herring admitted there was a little bit of that deer-in-the-headlight look in the mm -hmm. locker room at halftime. And uh, But they somehow, they settled each other down. They got it together. They went back to doing what they do best. And uh, they were able to come out there on top. And that's the key again this week is just playing the kind of football that Refugio has the capability of playing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we all know they've been in this situation. Yes. My gosh, it's their third straight semifinal appearance. Mm -hmm. So uh, they've been in that situation. Now, if Refugio wins, it will play Wednesday at 7.30 at AT&T Stadium. Mm -hmm. If Yoakum wins, it'll play Thursday, I believe, is it? 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock at AT&T Stadium. So uh, you'll have Wednesday and Thursday games next week at uh, AT&T Stadium. And for both schools, if they win, they have a short turnaround yeah, because, sure. you know, they lose a day, mm -hmm. which is, is always tough. But, uh, you know, I think any team, if they can play for a state championship, yeah. will deal with whatever they have to deal with. I mean, mm -hmm. let's face it, how many teams would love to be in that position? Yeah, yeah, so. You know, we'll wait and see. Uh, we'll keep you posted. One game Thursday, one game Friday. Both of them at uh, Cy Fair, the Berry Center, mm -hmm. which is now called uh, FCU Stadium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it is the Berry Center, though, uh, where our, some of our teams have played in the past. So uh, if you want to go to the game, if not, follow us on Twitter, and we'll keep you updated. And uh, hopefully... If we have a team or two, mm -hmm. we'll think optimistically. If we have two teams at, in the state final, we'll be back again uh, with another edition of The Grid.